many months, this city has been in the grip of a terrible fear. For many months, no woman dared to walk the streets alone. But now the reign of terror is over, and the murderer, dubbed by the popular press the Carnation Killer, has at last been brought to book and stands before this court. Arthur Stephen Page, you have heard the verdict of the court. A just and humane verdict. Cash, pounds sterling. Well, of course, English pounds. Do you know any other kind? <laughs> but there's nothing wrong with the money. It's mine, quite legal. <sighs> okay, so I've changed. We still have a deal, don't we? Look, will you stop going on about the money? I tell you, it's mine, quite legal. Couldn't be more so. I'm getting it from a solicitor. An attorney. Cabs here. What time is it? It's 9.45. It shouldn't take more than 10 minutes to get to the station. Less than that. Depends on the traffic, though. Even depending on that, 10 minutes at the most. What time is it? Still 9.45. Oh, well, um, 9.45 and 40 seconds. I don't want to be late. I know. Funny, going to meet someone you've never seen before. A blind date. Well, not quite. No. After all, you know quite a bit about Mr. Crabb. Listen, sweetheart, I have to leave town for a day or two, and I thought... Uh, hmm? Uh, Graham. Yeah, Michael Graham. Yes, that one. Well, I didn't want you trying to reach me, and I wasn't here. Get the picture? Yes. Yes, indeed. <laughs> and you, too. If I miss Graham or miss the train... You won't. There's plenty of time. You Peter, might I might. There we are. Here's the receipt. Let's get his signature, remember? Yes. And the key to the house. You have the train tickets? Yes, Mr. Baverstock. I got them yesterday. Excellent. Strange way of doing business. Oh, the man couldn't come here. He's busy. That's what he said, sir. A flying visit. Yes, I suppose, sir. Uh, but I'm sorry to put you to all this trouble, my dear. Actually, I'm looking forward to it. Oh? Well, a day away from the office. <laughs> 
Well, now, Mr. Graham will be at the station. I know. Outside, Outside the... the third plane booth, the one nearest the magazine store. That's right. Don't like giving you all this responsibility. But after all, it is the safest way, sir. Nobody knows Julie's carrying that much cash except us. And Mr. Graham, of course. <laughs> You'll recognize him, I hope. I should hope so. Well, you better be going, then. Yes. I'll see you later, then. It's such a corny idea. How could I fail to recognize him? Graham 208. I want a cab right away. Oh, yes, and tell the florist to stand by the red carnation. Yes, that's right. Single red carnation. <laughs> Julie Marsh from Mr. Baverstock's office. I recognize you straight away, but I must say I think it's a corny idea. Are you ready? Ready? Our train leaves in about two minutes. Train? Yes, of course. Whatever you say. We'll have to hurry. And for pity's sake, be careful. Remember, he's dangerous, very dangerous. Dangerous? Killed nine times. Always women. You weren't there when he was picked up, were you? No, but... Well, I was. It took four of us to hold him down. Page is a killer. Man or woman is a killer. That's lucky. Apartment to ourselves. Very lucky. Where do you like to sit, Mr. Graham? Facing front or back? Facing you. That's what you want. Oh, yes. Definitely. Thank you. My pleasure, Miss Marsh. Sorry to disturb you, sir. And don't be. That's a good chap. Well, I wouldn't, sir, but these do need your signature. What's that? If you remember, sir, you did say I could have some time off today. Oh, yes, yeah, so I did, Peter. Thank you. Yes, put him through. Hello, George. How are you? Good. It's fine. Yes. And Emily? Yeah. Well, what can I do for you? Oh. Hmm? Well, give me... The, give, give me the details. I see. The van crashed here. We put units into this surrounding area here within a few minutes. No sign of him, so he could be anywhere in this area. Suppose he took this route. All right, suppose he did. Where's it leading? Right to the main line station, Waterloo. That's my point. Call them. If there's any authority you like, but no train leaves the station until it's been searched. Forbes, get over there. Yes, sir. And see they're thoroughly searched. Dead on time. Dead on time. Do you believe in coincidence, Miss Marsh? What? You remind me of a girl I once knew. 
She's gone now. They all are. Peter. Sir? Whoever she is, good luck. Thank you, sir. Well, I suppose I'd better start behaving like the personal assistant to a London solicitor. You're Michael Charles Graham. Michael Charles Graham. Well, Mr. Graham, your great-uncle, Edward Francis Graham, has died and left you £40,422. Which, at your request, I now hand over to you in cash, which no doubt you will count, check and verify later. And together with that cash sum, he also bequeathed you his house, Westerling, in the county of Hampshire, together with the contents thereof. I now hand you the key to the said property. And I am empowered by G.P. Baverstock, attorney to the aforesaid Edward Francis Graham, to escort you to the property and remain while you take inventory of all the goods and chattel therein. You're going to... <laughs> you seem to be taking your great-uncle's death very badly. Oh, yes, poor great-uncle Edward Francis. This house, Westerling, in Hampshire? That's right. Have you been to inspect the property before? No. Do you know exactly where it is? Outside a village, about 15 miles from Winchester. Far from the village? Afraid so. Your nearest neighbour is, well, a long way away. It sounds like a lonely place. It is. But you're going to take me there? Of course. That's what you wanted, wasn't it? It's exactly what I wanted. Money. A lonely place. You. <laughs> First? I'm sorry, sir. Emergency. I'm at the station now, sir. And? We slept in delay on all trains. How many left before you got there? About five in all, sir. I've got the details here. Sergeant. So must I be. All that cash, and I forgot to get you to sign for it. Here. Now I'm covered for every eventuality legally. The money is all yours, Mr. Graham. Your responsibility. I'm surprised your boss didn't trust you with it. Oh, I don't mean to say you're not to be trusted, but... A girl like you. Fair game for anyone who wanted to wrap me over the head, grab the case and run. Mr. Baverstock thought it was the best security. After all, who'd suspect I was carrying over 40,000 in cash? Anyway, it was your idea. I must say I was a bit puzzled when you wrote and insisted on ready cash. It's a business deal. That's what I said to Mr. Baverstock. A deal that's only just legitimate, Mr. Graham. Cash, a quick turnover and no questions asked. Something like that. I thought that was what you must have in mind. Oh, I've lots of things in mind, Miss Marsh. But time. I'm sorry, sir. Couldn't be held.
Just a moment, sir. Outside. What on earth do you think you're doing? I'm arresting you on suspicion. Of what? That you are Anthony Stephen Page. What did you say? My name is Graham, Michael Graham. Yeah, I can prove I'm it. I'm still taking you in, sir. You can prove it when we get down to the station. Take your hands off me. They say you never see what's under your nose. Come on. Let go of me, do you hear? Fate. It has to be fate. This house, Westerling, lonely, out of town. A perfect hideaway. There's no scent on earth like a carnation. Try. It's heavy, not too heavy, not too cloying. Perfect. Color. So red. So very red. I tell you, this is utterly ridiculous. You can explain it all to the superintendent. He'll be through in a minute. Ah, found him at the station, sir. Page, sir. It is Page. You tell me. Do you know I feel curious at ease with you? Or maybe it's just trains rattling along, taking one far, far away to somewhere secret, somewhere safe. Safe? From the madding crowd. I bet you're very efficient at what you do. Well, I try to be. Never make mistakes? I try not to. Well, there's always a first time for everything. I'm sure you understand, Mr. Graham. I do not understand. We have an emergency, a panic, if you like. So the police rush around arresting everyone inside, huh? As I explained, sir, this man Page is very dangerous. And do I look like him in the slightest way? Well, no, sir. Well, but then. You were wearing a red carnation, sir. Oh, so you're arresting everyone with a carnation now, are you? Page has a liking, a reputation for wearing red carnations. And naturally, a young officer with a little too much zeal and perhaps not quite enough sense. I hope you'll accept our apologies, sir. I have no alternative. You could bring a charge of false arrest. Oh, Just let me get to a phone. Of course. Oh, sir. Sir, the uh, page has been cited in 15 different places so far. Well, check them all out and keep looking. Oh. Bavisock, it's Graham, Michael Graham. I'm not at the railway station, I'm at the police station. I can't explain now. It's that darn carnation. I wish I'd never thought of the idea. Mr. Graham, I'm confused. The train left a good 25 minutes ago. Why aren't you on it with Miss Marsh? Marsh? The young lady I sent to meet you, exactly as you requested. Just the point. I was delayed at a business meeting. I thought she'd have enough sense to wait. After all, there is another train. No, of course she wasn't there, but I was. Red carnation and all outside the third phone booth. There, no sign of her. Of course she couldn't have missed me. Too darn conspicuous. Well, the police didn't miss me. Oh, no, I'll explain later. Well, I can only assume that when you didn't turn on in time, she decided to make her way back here. Be the only sensible thing. No, no, she isn't here yet. But she should be any moment. Oh, look, Bavistock, I think the best thing I can do is come over there, too, and wait for her with you. Yeah. I shall feel safer if you have this. They think Paige may have jumped a boat to France. train was due to leave ten minutes ago. The police are on the trains. The police? What for? Oh, didn't you know? There's a killer on the loose.
How much longer is this going to take? Not long, sir. What does that mean? Not long, sir. As soon as we finish searching the train. That could take a quarter of an hour or more. We'll never make it up. It'll take even longer if I stay here chatting, sir. I say, well, I know my rights. I want to protest at this delay. I'm already late for a very important appointment. Well, if you must, you must. My turn must make a note of it. Could I have your name, sir? My name? To put on the official complaint. Forget it. Just get a move on, will you? Won't be long now, sir. They haven't found a single murderer yet. If you can offend them, or shall I? Look, your girl's been gone nearly an hour. If she's coming back, she'll be here by now, won't she? Yes, but you don't know Julie. She's... She's a good girl. Hmm. There must be some mistake. An accident, perhaps. A good girl with a briefcase full of money. This is your fault, you know. Mine? Yes, yours. If you conducted your business in the normal manner, come here to collect it. Look, I'm a busy man. All I wanted was the money. Quick look at the house, see what was saleable, and I'm off again. Do you realize they have to be on a plane for Canada at 7.30? Your girl's run off, Baverstock, taken off with 40,000 in cash. Your girl, Julia's having herself an easy ride, Baverstock. An easy ride on my money. Count and verify it. That's what she said, wasn't it? Yes. After all, it's mine now. You dozed off. Late night? No. It's just the train, I suppose. Or perhaps I bore you. No, no, of course not. It might be neither of those things. Psychologically, sleep can be a suppressant, a manifestation of inner tensions. At the moment of supreme excitement, the mind just switches off. Do you know much about psychology? I've had dealings with psychiatrists. They're amusing fellows. A suppressant to curb the anticipation of things to come. Anticipation can be much better than the event, Miss Marsh. Much better. No, it isn't pretty what he does to the it? That's why we have to find him very quickly. There's no pattern to him either. Not once a year, half a year, or even once a month. Age kills when he wants to. Kill twice in one day. Yes? Yes? Yes, sir. What was that name again? Well, we've cordoned off the immediate area, sir. Yes, and there's a general alert. And the gentleman's name is... No, sir, I... Graham. hope he hasn't got further... Michael room. Graham. No, sir. I see. Can I have a description of yes. Miss Marsh? Miss Julie Marsh. Yes, sir, I have that. But I still feel... Well, I hope there's been some dreadful mistake. Look, has a Miss Marsh been involved in any accident? Well, it may take a while to check, Mr. Baverstock. In the meantime, uh, we'll send someone over to take a statement. Yes, sir. Goodbye. What was that about? Oh, nothing to do with Page. Suspected theft. That'd be nice. To get this Page business off my back and get back to simple theft. Who was it? Oh, a solicitor. Name of, um, Batherstock. Well, it's in the hands of the police now. They'll be sending someone over to take a statement. Don't involve me. But Mr. Graham, as you keep pointing out, it is your money. How can I not involve you? My surmise was right, then. This need for the money right away in cash. Odd. What do you mean, odd? I'm just odd. Odd. Look, I'm a businessman. I make a lot of deals, a lot of deals. Some of them require immediate cash. And they're all perfectly legal? Of course. Hmm. Well, all the same, you said you didn't want to be involved. What I mean is I don't like too many questions, the wrong kind of questions. The police are bound to want Look, to... you're a solicitor. I'm a client, right? Just steer them away from the wrong kind of questions, that's all. It'll be worth your while. Money isn't always the paramount consideration, Mr. Graham. Not to us all. Forbes, job for you. Go to this address. Hello? Uh, get the facts. Yes. Yes, madam. I, I, I wonder if I... Just get the facts, lad. Yes, but where do you think you saw him? Handle the press, okay? Uh, yes, sir. They've got the full story. Pictures, big pictures. Big pictures, sir. The public are the best police we have now. If one of them spots them.
Not too bad, sir. Only half an hour late. Will we make it up? Mm. Oh, some. Not all of it. Uh -huh. you... Well, don't blame me. Blame him. Bannerstock. Yes, you two met before. This is the idiot who arrested me. Um, Detective Constable Forbes, sir, you called a little while ago. That's right. It's about my assistant, Julie, Miss Julie Marsh. Do you mind if I take some notes, sir? There's been no one of that name involved in any accident, then. No, sir. I told you, Bannerstock, she's run off with the money. How much money, sir? More than 40,000 in cash. Cash? Yes, and unfortunately in used notes of low denomination. It's sort of unusual, isn't it, sir, to carry that sort of money about? May I ask why? No, I'm afraid you may not. Sir, I can... You should know better, officer, than to ask someone in my position to betray a client's confidence. Suffice to say, the money... The whole transaction was perfectly legal. Miss Marsh was carrying the money. To hand over to my client, yes. Fine. Well, I'd better have a description of her, so we'll put it out right away. Yes, of course. Well, Julie is 27, tall, blonde, now he'll go out and arrest every tall blonde. What kind of girl is she, sir? She's worked for me for five years, completely trustworthy. A nice, gentle girl. Vulnerable. The next stop's ours. Oh, we're going to have company. Thank you. My pleasure. Thank you very much indeed, sir. We'll put this on the air right away. We'll find her. Oh, never mind her. Find the money. What do you suggest I do, sir? Broadcast a description of 40,000 banknotes? You impudent... Mr. Graham, please. This way, officer. You'll be in touch. As soon as we hear something, sir. You don't want to think she's taken the money, do you? I can't bring myself to believe it. Well, maybe she hasn't. A lone girl with 40,000. She's a fair target for anyone. you remember? I always wear one. It's a kind of trade with me. The train will be moving soon. I don't want to be carried on another fifty miles. Something important? Oh, it doesn't matter now. I'll go in the morning, I suppose. Huh? Where? Great Uncle Edward's place. I never knew him. Well, he was a good man. He was a fool. Sitting on all that money, putting it to no use. If he'd built it up, he could have been rich. I mean, really rich. Are you rich? Really rich? I will be. I will be. It's very nice, I believe. Quiet. The kind of place where a man could take time, reassess himself. 
the house you've inherited, Westerly. I'm afraid it's a bit dusty. No matter. I didn't mind walking. What? Oh, well, I promise you, I did arrange for a car to meet us. I did it myself over a week ago. I told you I didn't mind. I enjoyed it, as a matter of fact, to be out in the open with such charming company. This is magnificent. Splendid. Splendid? For my purposes. It's so very, very quiet. Nice room. Oh, you are on edge. On edge? As if you're expecting what? someone to jump out on you at any moment. Have you any idea where the uh, kitchen might be? Oh, down beyond the stairs, I, I should think. Well, there won't be any milk, but there might be coffee and sugar. Will that do? Yes. Yes, thank you. expecting someone. No, Sister of Anne, not. Sister Anne, seest thou anyone coming? The kettle's on, we'll hear it whistle. Ah, there's plenty of canned food too. Enough for a month, certainly enough for dinner tonight. Dinner? You're supposed to help me make an inventory, aren't you? And this place is packed from top to bottom. It'll be a long job. You may have to stay the night. Oh, I can't do that. Besides, aren't you supposed to be rushing on somewhere from here? Change my mind. I'm a creature of sudden impulses. 
Well, we'll talk about that later. Do you want to show me the rest of the house? Oh, all right. Where shall we start? In the kitchen? No, I've seen it. Upstairs, the bedroom. Best place to judge the character of whoever occupied the house before. But you know who occupied the house before, your great-uncle. Besides, we're supposed to be taking an inventory, not judging characters. Well, indulge me. I hardly knew the old boy, you know. And in a bedroom, everything is laid bare. After you. An impasse. I want an impasse, this sergeant. It's French. We're getting nowhere fast. Page turn up. No. Oh, I don't mean we won't find him. Not ever. It's how we'll find him. When he kills again, that'll lead us to him. Fine thing. Copper standing here waiting. Hoping, yes. Hoping for a corpse to turn up. <laughs> Ridiculous, quite ridiculous. I can't bear them. Such a tiny rodent. Rats, they sickened me. One rat and a small one, you'll agree. It was a small one. I don't one. know, I didn't stop to see. It was a very tiny one, that's what's so peculiar. You run from a creature probably more frightened of you, a creature too small to present any threat to you, and yet you don't run from me. You? Why should I? Well, I'm bigger than a rat. It was nice upstairs. I liked it. Especially the bedroom. Big and somber. And damp. Only needs to be slept in, Julie. Slept in? With rats running over you? It would be quite easy to dispose of them. To kill them. Oh, quite humanely, of course. I shall insist upon that. I shall probably do it myself. It sounds as though you're intending to stay on here, then. I think I might, for a while. After all, why not? I have everything I need here. Everything I want. Coffee. So he fell off the edge of the world. Don't understand it. After all, Paige is a loner. No friends, no contacts. Anyway, it'd be a fool who took Paige under his roof. <clears throat> Dead fool. It's a woman, huh? You don't know Paige. Most of the time, he's as calm and sane as you are. Handsome, too, a big hunk with a charm to match. He's come some woman who doesn't know yet that tomorrow she may be dead. Well, how did you get on? <clears throat> I don't know whether to find it under larceny or missing person. Well, who's missing? This girl that works for Baverstock, and the damn fool trusted her with 40,000 pounds in cash. Supposed to hand it over to a chap at Waterloo Station. By an awful coincidence, this chap the one I pulled in today. The chap with the carnation. Well, that was how they were going to meet, you see. Well, who was going to meet? The girl, the one with the money. It's all in the report. Graham! Yes, sir, the chap who raised hell with me today. I pulled him into the station. Give it to me again. This girl, carrying 40,000, was going to meet Graham at Waterloo Station. Yes. The station we're covering for Paige. Ah, yes, sir. That's why I pulled Graham in by mistake. He was there at Waterloo Station, wearing this. That's how the girl would know him? Yes, I... Who's the lawyer? Baverstock. Car sergeant. <laughs> Get stuck early this time of year. Yes. Now, don't draw them. Close them. Don't you want to start taking that inventory now? Later. When I finish my coffee. Much cosier. Now, do sit down, Julie. Take your coat off. I do wish you'd relax. I can be very good company if you relax. The 
Sit down. You're very accurate about this place. It is very lonely. When I stood and looked outside the window just now, I couldn't see another place or a building. Not another person within miles. I think I may plant carnations all around the house. Red carnations, a sea of them, like the Red Sea, a blood red sea. But I don't understand. It's quite simple, Mr. Batterstock. Simple enough for us to overlook, even though it was staring us in the face. Miss Marsh was going to meet Mr. Graham here wearing a red carnation. Paige likes to wear a red carnation. Coincidence like that? No, it's impossible. The stupid things in life are all possible, believe me. What were the exact arrangements? Well, Mr. Graham was to stand outside the third phone booth wearing a carnation. Then it is possible. Paige escaped less than a mile from the station. He might easily have made his way there. And your girl picked him up by mistake. Well, it's true. She'd never seen Mr. Graham before. I was worried about it. None of us in the office had. So the carnation could be the clincher. She'd go up to the man wearing it and say, Mr. Graham. And Paige is smooth enough to say yes. And she was to hand over 40,000 in notes. Yes. And the house. Eh? Well, Miss Marsh left here with train tickets and keys to a house Mr. Graham had inherited. She was to take him there. Money? An escape route? A house to hide in? And a pretty girl to go along. What else could Paige ask for? <coughs> Where is this house, Mr. Babbistone? It's called Westerling. That's the full address. Well, I must say, in one respect, this is encouraging. Encouraging? Well, the idea of Julie being a thief's been killing me. Well, I wouldn't get too encouraged. Paige may be killing her. Get through to the Hampshire County Police. Hurry. Do you know we know nothing about each other, you and I? We've been together for some time now, yet I know nothing about you. I'd like to. I'm just a girl who works in an office. Incorrect. You are a pretty girl who works in an office, and now you're here with me. Makes a difference. Why do you keep staring like that? I like to look at you. I'm sorry I'm disturbing you. I didn't mean to. I spend too much time alone. Alone? But I thought you told Mr. Baverstock you run nine companies, always on the move. Yes, that's why I'm alone, I suppose. Too much time for business and not enough for personal relationships. But now we're talking about me and I wanted to talk about you. You're not married, no engagement ring, but you must have boyfriends or a boyfriend? A boyfriend, yes. We really ought to make a start on that inventory. All right. You do upstairs and I'll stay down here. We'll do here. it together. All right. After we've eaten. Eaten? Those are my terms. Dine with me and then we'll get right down to it. All right. Agreed. I'll go and see... No, no. The meal's my idea. My responsibility. You stay here and relax. I'll go and prepare it. Whatever you say. And then we'll get to know each other better. Perhaps you uh, need a drink, Miss Bastock. No, 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 thanks. Oh, but perhaps you'd like me. Oh, it's very kind of you, sir. But uh, I'm on duty. My superior officer is standing nearby, too, unless... Scotch, if you have it. So do. Please. Mr. Graham? Yes, I'll have one. One glass of scotch. Before return of 40,000 pounds. Why don't you shut up? Yes, you, Mr. Graham. There's a girl out there somewhere, perhaps with a homicidal maniac, perhaps fighting for a very life, and all you can think about is a case for a paltry money. Paltry? I, I said paltry. shut up and I meant it. Either keep quiet or leave this office. I think perhaps I will. Your health, Mr. Bradford. I have Sergeant Jeff Harrell here, sir. Hampshire Police. Let me speak to him. Make it loud and clear. Yes, sir. You might as well hear this, too. She's your girl. Superintendent? Yes? Uh, Sergeant Farrell, Hampshire police, sir. Have you checked the house? Westerling. You, you did say Westerling, sir. Yes. What have you found? Well, I'm here now, sir, and I've been over the place from top to bottom, grounds and all. There's no one here, sir. In fact, it looks as though there hasn't been anybody here for months. Superintendent? Yes, I'm here. Any further instructions, sir? No. 
Thank you, Sergeant. Tin beans or peas? Any preference? Right. Anything happening out there? Big parade passing by? Circus? There's no one. Right. No one at all. Sorry it didn't lead anywhere. Superintendent, no one at the house means... There's that... no point in jumping to conclusions. We already did that. And where did it get us? Probably she didn't meet Paige after all. Then she did run off with the money. Perhaps not that either. She may turn up with the money and a reasonable explanation. Stranger things happen all the time. The minute I hear anything, I'll let you know. There's no point in your staying any longer, Mr. Graham. We return to the hotel. I suppose so. I still have to see the house. If there's anything further, I'll let you know. Yeah. Place for a man to reassess, right? Westerly. That's not relaxing. I thought I told you to relax. We agreed, didn't we? I'll tell you what. Why don't you hunt around in there and see if you can come up with some wine for us? All right. You're not going back on your agreement, are you? No. No, of course not. Good. A deal's a deal. Off you go, then. here and you weren't here. I thought you'd gone back. It was my idea. But you should have been here. We worked it out together down to the last minute. Me on the slow train, you on the express with a taxi to make up the difference. You should have been here. It's all the other train was It isn't going to work. I know it is going to work perfectly. Now get a hold of yourself. Julie, Julie. You've got to keep going. You must be brave. He's, he's, he's much bigger than we imagined. Stronger. I'm not dealing in brute strength. Did anybody see you on the train? There was a woman, but she won't remember us. And when we left the station? I pretended the car hadn't turned up and persuaded him to walk, just as we'd planned. Did you meet anybody on the way? No one. Perfect. You, you got his signature on the receipt? Yes. Good. 
It, it, it isn't going to work. I keep telling you, yes. You no. trust me, don't you? Yes, but... Well, then what could go wrong now? But it's already started to go wrong. Don't you see that? The train was late. That was something we hadn't thought of, wasn't it? What's going to go oh, wrong next? All right. Let's just look at this with a legal, incisive mind. Yes. Take it step by step. And if you can find one loophole, just one, we'll call it off. Please, right, please. Now, now, step by step. You met Michael Graham as arranged, and he signed for it as arranged. You gave him his money as arranged, right? Yes. Then you took him on a train. You brought him to this house, to Westerling. You let him into the house, you gave him his store key, and you left him. You never saw him again, huh? Receipt signed by Graham, and you're clear. We're both clear. There'll be an inquiry. Eventually, yes, bound to be, and you'll tell exactly that story. The police will check out the rail westling from top to bottom and find nothing. It'll become one of those unsolved puzzles. Graham is a mysterious man. I mean, why else did he want all this money in cash anyway? Now the police will check and check, and eventually come to a dead end. And you and I will have forty thousand pounds to play with, my darling. But this house. This house was the possession of a man who died without heirs, intestate. Now, you know we've been trying to trace his relatives for months. Well, not anymore, Julie. That's something I haven't told you. You see, I put the file among the closed cases in the vault, and it may never come to light again. But if it does... If it does. I made a regrettable mistake, but not a criminal one. So you see, Julie, legally, this house doesn't exist anymore. It'll likely remain locked up, forgotten for years. Until maybe vandals break in, or the local authority gets curious. And what will they find? An unexplained skeleton. The rats will have taken care of everything else. Rats? You probably scared them away. I saw one upstairs in the bedroom. Only one. I told you, I checked this place thoroughly. It's alive with rats. Just a few bones, Julie. There'll be nothing left to connect with Graham or us. You just have to be brave just a little longer. Just a little. Julie! Little. It's supposed to be lucky. Try it. All of it. How is it? It's fine. Not too salty? No. A little sherry improves everything, don't you think? I'll surprise you in a little while. I really will surprise you. And the feast will soon commence. He looks so strong. I told you, we're not dealing in brute strength. He'll be back in a minute with the meal. You make sure you give him a drink with it. And just two of these. Tasteless, painless, and quick. Humane. Hmm? Something he said. Keep me posted. You might have been right about Paige taking a train anyway. Winchester, police there have just found a woman dead on a train, strangled. Cuisine and Graham. It looks marvelous. Merci, mademoiselle. Tu es très gentil. If Mademoiselle would care to take her seat... It probably needs a good red wine to compliment it. But all we seem to have is a bottle of white. That's better. You're much more relaxed. It couldn't be that you're coming to like me at last, could it? No, no, I'll do that. I'm much stronger. One drives it in. A moment. Glasses. It should breathe first. Everything should be allowed to breathe for a little while. Come in. 
I'm just on my way down to Winchester. Oh, what for? To look at a corpse. Not a very pleasant task. It's not Julie, is it? No, Mr. Bavistock, a woman in her late 30s. She's been positively identified, and it isn't Miss Marsh. We're taking Miss Marsh off the missing persons list, sir, putting her back under wanted. Surely there's some connection. This murder, Winchester, you said, is the same general direction as Westerning. Yes, and it is even possible that your Miss Marsh and Page travelled on the same train. Well, then. But that's where the connection begins and ends, I think. After all, sir, if Page had picked her up, he wouldn't have missed a trick like that, would he? Pretty girl, empty house. Now I think Page and Miss Marsh are two separate issues now. I'm not going to send your compliments to the chef, then. In fact, he touched the thing. It's delicious. It's, it's just that I'm not very hungry, that's all. Got your mind set on other things, eh? I don't blame you. I've known it before. I am very attractive to women. I suppose that's why I hate them so much. Well, love, hate. Always putting on a style to snare a man and then drawing back at the last moment. It's frustrating. But you're not like that, are you, Julie? You mean it. I sensed it right away. The wine must be ready by now. I knew it would be. I imagined it to be soft. I imagined lots of things. Somehow, reality never measures up to the imagination. It's the women. It's the women who let you down. Always at the most moments. Julie? The wine. I can wait. Time for that later, Julie. Later. You're not going to disappoint me, are you? <laughs> Upstairs to lie down. I told you those pills act fast. But we're, we're clear now, Julie. Nothing but pleasures ahead. Julie, come on. Darling, I know what you had to do it was a shock, but you'll get over it. Come on, Julie!
Pardon me, do you believe in coincidences? You remind me of a girl I used to know. someone at the station, were you? Yes, a girl. Any girl. You've been a bad boy, haven't you? Have I? I don't suppose you remember, do you? Remember what? No, that's what I thought. Shall we go and talk now? Somewhere quiet? Though I don't suppose you'll ever be able to tell us just what he did. <laughs> 